Welcome back to Take 444. We're still in the seas, and this week I've got uh, three bands out of time. Um, a few records to show. These are bands from the 1980s, I guess you would say. Um, although they've been, they cover uh, several decades. Um, so when I first started uh, developing my own taste in music, um, through the punk years, um, I am of that vintage. <laughs> um, one of the bands that emerged that I saw very early on were The Cure. Um, they're playing in the background at the moment. Um, I saw them on their first UK tour in 1979, I think it was, 78 or 79. Um, there were about 200 people there, maybe less. Um, a bunch of us got up on stage and danced with them for the last two or three numbers. Um, it was just fantastic um, and I've seen them I haven't seen them for probably 25 years but I saw them um, I don't know a dozen or more times in the first uh, from 78 to uh, 83 or 4 I saw them a dozen times or more um, and they were always fantastic and Robert Smith's tastes uh, mirrored my own so um, he developed more and more into uh, what became what I became, what I realized was psychedelia. Um, I didn't know what it was at the time. Um, it was a trend that was going on throughout the UK at that time in between 79 and 82 or three. Um, it was slightly underground. It was a, a current that was um, not really uh, too obvious or, or spoken about, but it became there was something in the air and lots of people um, of my age picked up on it. Um, lots of them formed bands. Um, I had my go and uh, played in a few bands too. Um, and um, But the Cure, were, the Cure were one of the first bands that, um, that kind of uh, kick-started it, I think. Um, that, along with uh, Julian Cope, who I'm going to show, um, he wrote some stuff for the uh, music papers in the UK in the early 80s, late 70s. Um, and, um, and an Australian band called The Church, who were also uh, uh, very influential for me. So this is a, a bit of a, a nostalgic trip um, down memory lane, but uh, The Cure were, uh, were sort of one of the, the bands that uh, helped form my um, my musical identity back then, um, that and hearing the first Floyd album uh, and Revolver, uh, they were the, the, the ones that really set me off. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm just gonna go through these very quickly because everybody knows the, the records. And, um, so this is the first Cure record, uh, Three Imaginary Boys on Fiction. Um, what you're listening to at the moment is, uh, this is one of my favorite ones of theirs, uh, quite a psychedelic one. Um, is the head on the door from about 80, when was that, 85? Um, the big song for me that, uh, uh, the thing, one of the, the big moments for me was uh, watching The Cure on top of the pops um, doing the Caterpillar. Um, so uh, they were all sitting around um, on the floor. Instead of standing up, uh, they were all sitting around in a circle, um, which was unheard of at the time. Um, it's pretty unusual now, but to go on top of the pops back then and sit around in a circle um, and uh, badly mime your, your instruments. Uh, I'll, I'll include a clip here of uh, The Cure um, doing that.
they, it, it was just absolutely mind blowing. Uh, the way they dressed and uh, the music was uh, was hugely influential. So this is uh, the 12 inch of the Caterpillar. Um, and uh, the top as well, which came out at the same time. So special price of two pounds ninety nine. That was brand new when I got it. Um, so I, I followed the cure right through. Um, this is disintegration. Uh, uh, no, this is a uh, uh, mix up. This is disintegration. I have all of their their albums up until about um, turn of the century or so. Um, um, that was uh, this is if you're new to the cure and I can't remember can't imagine anybody here doesn't know them um, This is probably the, the best one to pick up um, Standing on a beach. Uh, this is all their singles So um, As I was saying the cure were a huge huge band um, in my circles and also in the UK around the people um, of that age uh, they were really influential and uh, Robert Smith joined the Banshees on tour, which I saw. Um, they played my local venue, um, which was about three miles away from where I lived. And um, I think the capacity was about a thousand people and it was absolutely jammed. Um, and he played two sets. He played the Cure, the Cure was support band to the Banshees and he played. And um, then they went on to do stuff like Dear Prudence and all of the, the stuff that Susie did um, in the early 80s, which was very psychedelic uh, and um, was a big influence on the whole the whole uh, mindset and scene of, uh, of people at that time. Um, we were all very, very susceptible to the 60s, but we didn't quite know how to get into it. Um, uh, and the Banshees and the Cure and this chap were... Um, the, the gateway really uh julian cope um and fried um his probably his best album um i've got i've got most of his stuff and uh he's he he was just a wonderful wonderful um a, a wonderful artist he put out some great stuff and he was very good live uh teardrop explodes which he was in before um, I shall get to them when I get around to tea eventually. Um, Teardrop Explodes were the, doing the same kind of thing as the Banshees and Echo and the Bunny Men were the other band. Um, so they were all uh, drawing strands from the 60s, uh, from the late 60s, psychedelia. Uh, they were talking about the doors and love in uh, their interviews and um, that was kind of uh, where I first heard about those bands. I mean, I, I was aware of The Doors, but Love were completely unknown in the UK until um, Julian Cope started talking about them. And uh, uh, and yeah, and he went on to do uh, some other stuff like this, which was, a uh, um, this is Peggy Suicide. Um, all fantastic uh, psychedelic records, um, which should be explored if, you, uh, if you're into psych and, um, You'd like to hear something slightly outside uh, the 60s. Um, there are lots of fantastic 60s psych bands to to explore and, and albums to explore. But um, sometimes uh, as you get near the bottom of the barrel, um, you get a couple of tracks which are slightly psychedelic uh, and the rest is uh, a little bit of sunshine pop or, or is uh, just good 60s pop. Um, but if you wanted something that's uh, got that that feel of psychedelia, but it's not from the 60s, um, those are bands to check out. Another band, or the other third, the third band I'm going to show, um, were an Australian band, The Church, um, from um, from the early 80s. So I saw them on their first UK tour in London. Um, this came out in, I can't remember, about 81 or 82. Um, uh, and they're still going. Uh, they've had a couple of lineup changes, but so this is their first album. Um, it's uh, it's got a different cover, I think, in in uh, um, uh, released elsewhere. I think in the states or in in um, in Australia it had a slightly different cover. It, it's a pretty dreadful cover, actually. Um, but the back cover um, gives a, an uh, an indication of 
back then um, you, you kind of uh, were clutching at straws and to see a drummer um, with a paisley shirt and scarf uh, was pretty mind-blowing and um, kind of uh, nailed their colours to the mast. Um, so this came with an insert, a lyric insert. Um, and this this is a fantastic record. Um, it has... It has, uh, is this where you live um, on the open side two, which is a just most magnificent psychedelic, early 80s psychedelia. Um, and really should have been well known. I don't know if it's well known now, but it um, it is really, really good. Uh, fantastic guitar work and uh, the whole package is uh, brilliant. The, the vocals, they played Rick and Back at 12 strings. Um, and wore beetle boots and tight trousers and they looked the part and they were great and uh this is my uh second favorite album of theirs um can't remember when this came out this is uh from the early 80s i believe but this one has uh travel by thought in it the end inside one travel by thought and it is just a proper trippy psychedelia um, There were lots of bands in the 80s who who uh, made great psych and um, and should be explored. This is uh, an EP of theirs. Um, 
And this is uh, an album that came out, uh, This so this is called uh, The Hypnagogue. Um, this came out last year, I believe. Um, double album from the church. Uh, they're a little bit more gothic now, uh, not not as jangle, jangly and uh, Rickenbacker like as they were before, but they're still they're still very good, um, and I recommend it. But um, get the fir those first two I showed you if you or check them out online if you're um, interested. Um, so yeah, three bands from the 1980s that uh, re do require some uh, or that do requires uh, re-evaluating because uh, they were very good and um, they, they, they were a gateway drug for me uh, into uh, exploring psychedelia um, and as you can probably tell I jumped uh, headfirst in um, and haven't really emerged come up to surface uh, in the last 40 years um, anyway that's enough crap of me talking uh, Enjoy the music and um, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.